Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at the Suncast analysis tool within IES. Because we've already built the geometry, it makes sense that at this point we have a look at some of the analysis tools available within the package for exploring that. Now, just as a precursor to this video, what I've done is I've removed all but one of the solar shades on the south facade of this building. We'll see why in a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Suncast tab and we're going to have a chat about the things that you'll find here. So heading over to the first of all images tabs allows us to take multiple pictures over the course of the year. We're not going to be using that and I don't think I'll even cover it for the tutorials. If you want to explore that I urge you go and explore it. There's a limit to what I can achieve within these videos and part of learning this software is exploring with it. But in the analysis tab, we have some information here. The first of all, we have the tab. Are we going to be looking at NG analysis or we're going to be looking at exposure analysis? So this might be number of hours. And this might be looking at the actual energy in kilowatt hours per meter squared. We have the period of time that we're looking at and commonly we'll adjust this to reflect what we want to try and find out if we have a particular time of the year that we are interested in be that summer winter or the shoulder months then we'll have a look at just those bits in isolation this improves the ins the simulation time which can begin to get quite considerable with more complex models we have diffuse shading factors and this is taking into account how sun reflects off other objects as well as how it tr it goes through semi-transparent objects. See so if you've got elements of the facade that act as shading that are semi-transparent you will need to have this on. We have HR grid which I'm going to come back to. But for initially I just want to run this simulation and I'll do first annual simulation and when it comes to when we're looking at HR grid I'll just do a smaller one. So I'm going to hit the simulate button and while that's running through that I'm just going to show you a method of speeding this up if you have it I think this is an extra that you have to pay for but if we hit go to simulation you can see that we can actually turn parallel simulation on for suncast and radiance calculations and you can set this to a custom mount of cores or you can just have it on as default. Okay, so that's run off. What we need to do now is need to load up those results. Heading down and loading in the solvis file. So solvis, 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 load. That should load up pretty quickly. It'll give us some options for display. We're just gonna keep this in kilowatt hours per meter squared this tends to be the most useful. We'll show them on everything and we got the display range here. So if I wanted to I could just look at the summer months or the shoulder months or the winter months if I've calculated for the entire year. One little point to note is this relative value. The reason why this is important is that even if the difference in solar exposure isn't that much between certain surfaces it's still going to read blue and red so it will show it as being a massive quite a large change if we are really trying to hone down on a particularly troublesome facade what we might do is switch this to absolute and then put in some thresholds so all right, relative hit apply and what we're going to do is this is going to load up model 2 viewer and we can see our models here you can see it's also a little bit glitched out with that part so i'm just gonna there we go not glitched out it's actually doing its job i was just being a bit of a fool anyway we can see that it's loaded up and we've got effectively a heat mapping on the buildings where in the bottom left it shows us what these colors actually represent and we can see that obviously the south facing roof 
has taken an absolute pummeling over the course of the year and other areas have not. And potentially we could argue that this Bresol Ale is doing something. But the actual data isn't particularly precise because the areas of analysis are quite large. Now this is still useful. We might use this very early on in a building project if the geometry is constantly changing, just to run through a couple of different options. Or if we're doing more master planning, say for a neighborhood, then this allows us to quickly run off a model for multiple and multiple buildings and seeing how they interact with one another. As you imagine, because of this, it is a simplified calculation, or it's not in as much detail, these simulations run off a lot faster than the calculation I'm about to show you. So now we're going to add, we're not going to use diffuse shading factors, we're just going to use the high resolution grid. And turn diffuse off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down just to a month. And I want a summer month. Let's go for July. I'm going to hit simulate. Yeah, that's fine. And we can see here. See, this is going to run off much faster now because we've got just the one month. And before we load up the model, we can see that its IES has created a grid over the top. And this grid is the, the kind of resolution that we're looking at. You can drop this down lower than one meter squared. To what gain that you get, well, that's debatable. And this really it comes down to a matter if you're really looking at depth of quite specific fin arrangements on Brisa Lale. So let's load up those results. I don't believe, yeah, there we go. Hit apply. If you've done for an entire year, this can take quite a bit of time. So just a little bit of warning. And we can see now we've got a much higher resolution grid. And we can see that even the effects of this eaves here is causing some amount of shading on the top of the building. Now this is a really, really powerful tool for talking with potentially people who are not as familiar as yourself with building physics. If you're using this software, I'm going to make the assumption that you're fairly familiar with the field. Or you at least have enough knowledge and understanding to be doing this kind of modeling. But we deal constantly within our profession with people who are less knowledgeable. And having visualizations are a strong way of being able to discuss the need for things and tell a story about why we should have things like Breeze of Ale. So one way that we might do that is we might actually make this image more reflective. So first of all, this was supposed to be a month in July. So I'll bring the sun for July. I'm gonna just hit this right button here and I'm going to bring the sun right in. Reduce, Ooh, that's a bit too much. Increase, increase. I might add the shading on and I might show it during the peak summer hours. So now we have the sun on. We can see how it's, we can see that it's causing that, particularly that shade there, is causing a good deal of shading. We can also see from the coloring that it's having an effect. And a lot of, for a lot of people, they won't actually look at this values down in the bottom left. We as engineers can see them and they are important, but for potentially architects or developers or clients, the colors, the shadows, the graphics, these are the things that are going to speak to them, not the numbers down here. So this can be a powerful way of, of achieving that. That's all I really want to show you in this video. Uh, I will note that if we shift into another one, it'll ask us if we want to save the results. We can do if we want to. Uh, I'm not going to bother for this one. 
in the next video what we're going to be doing is start to look at the innards of the building but I wanted to show you that just because we haven't done that we do that we still actually have a model that can be useful for certain things thanks all for watching and I'll catch you on the next one